Hey everybody, welcome back to the show. So, kind of a different episode tonight. It's intended to be a video response to a thread on the Antique Caterpillar Machinery Owners Club website titled Vintage Cat Tools. I'll try to include a link down below. Sometimes YouTube lets me put links in, sometimes they don't. If I can't make it work, just search for ACMOC, you'll find the website. So the thread is about just that, the old cat tools that came with every machine, standard issue back in the day. Every tractor Caterpillar sold came with a standard set of hand tools. Not many of these tools have seemed to have survived though. You can find bits and pieces at swap meets generally, but there's just not a lot of it around. You need to know what you're looking for, identify the numbers because outside manufacturers made all these tools. Cat didn't make them themselves, so they can often be confused with something else. But I dug a ways back in my archives and pulled out something that's really cool. It's another one of these time capsule pieces. It's, it's, it's really interesting. This old wooden crate right here. And yes, this is a new old stock toolkit for a cat d4 and this is just how they did it back in the day just kind of a scrap wood crate hastily pounded together there's remnants of an old shipping tag down here with like an old nail that used to hold it on tag's been long ago ripped off but it's uh it's really interesting and well all the parts books for the old cat machines had the contents of these toolkits near the back. This is where you can see the book I have here. It's for 7U D4. Um, near as I can tell, this kit would have been 6U or 7U series Cat D4, late 1940s to late 1950s era. And here's your complete breakdown of all the tools that came with those tractors. So that's in every parts book. It's all back there. Helps you know what you're looking for. So, as far as deciphering the rest of this, I don't know what the WG stands for. I have not been able to figure that out. We have this 4S-44 right here. Near as I know, the only thing that had to do with Cat D4 that was 4S would have been the Cat Straight Dozer Blade that they offered as an option. And the 44 could have been the Cat 44 Hydraulic Unit, which was oftentimes paired with those 4S and 4A Dozer Blades. That's just a guess on my part. We do see some stenciling here. It says not complete without 4B 1856. So all we need to do is look in the parts book and right down there, 4B 1856 compressor. See separate illustration, four parts. And you can see there's like a grease gun broken down here. Another grease gun there, another grease gun there. They had several different styles. Here we go. That's the breakdown of the volume compressors. That happens to be this right here. They were made by Alamite. You can see Alamite volume pump, model 6521, matching tag on top. That was not new old stock, but that's a rather nice representation of what these were back in the day. That's an auction find that I, look at the grease on this thing. I use this. This is what I lubricate the undercarriages on all my old cats with. So you can see why that is not in the kit. It was never gonna fit in the crate, but let's just, uh, let's open it up. Of course, we have the old Cosmoline paper surrounding everything. Just gently fold these flaps back. And there it is. In all its glory, all this stuff's brand new. It's, it's never been used. It's never been out of this crate. So let's just start pulling items out. First one, look at that, it's a brush. 2B4317, and we can reference all this stuff to the parts book, 2B4317 brush right there. And looking at it, there's no manufacturer's mark on there. They just stenciled the cat part number. All we have stamped here is vulcanized in rubber, one and a half inch. So that's just the general size of the brush. And you can look at the old archive cat films on YouTube here where they're brushing off around a fuel injector to get all the dirt away before they disassemble anything and that's what they used. I don't know how many of these just ended up being used as a paintbrush back in the day and then they were never good for the toolkit anymore, but that's one you'll probably never find anywhere, that goofy brush. Next, we've got the oil can and this one was made by Eagle. That's an Eagle can and guaranteed never used. I like how you can see where the handle right here, where it curls around. When you tighten the, the cup on there, you can see where they didn't get a whole lot of 
paint applied kind of up here a little bit too it's a little bit light but gasket's still in place and that's yeah that's just clean it's never ever had oil in it really cool so reference that to the book we're looking at the 1b7763 oil can right there that's uh that's what it is next up you all should recognize this that's the starting rope with the wooden handle that you wrap around the flywheel for the starting engine and we can again reference to the book right here we have 3b3808 rope starting and 3b3809 handle starting rope it's crazy to think this is this is a special tool okay um just some quick specs on it yeah it's it's pretty long actually i stretched this out and measured it the rope itself from the knot to the handle is 80 inches 80 80 inches long it's about a 5 16 woven rope it looks a lot like clothesline rope really there's nothing really special about it the handle right here wooden handle that's four inches wide and it is inch and an eighth maximum diameter in the center and each end tapers down to three quarters of an inch diameter so if you want to make your own those are all the pertinent specs let's pull this box out next the the brush is shedding okay there's bristles all over this thing but we don't have any numbers on this box no identifiers nothing like that we open it up and this is the suction gun okay we can find it in here it says it's a grease gun but that's a suction gun at the end of the day 3b2301 and again it's one that's it's never been used it's you can actually feel the air coming out it's got a good seal on the inside yet and yeah it's pushing air there so you would put this down in an oil compartment and then pull on the handle that sucks the oil out and then you can go and push the handle back in again and then that would you know push the oil back out of here you can drain like final drives without having to remove a plug underneath or just whatever else you'd have to do and it's even got a good detent at the end click it's just oh my i just i love it brand new um it's just crazy to think so much of this is just it's it's new it's never been used okay we'll pull this out next you got to be kind of careful with it just paper packaging but we have tag on there genuine caterpillar parts quantity one part number eight f nine eight six six description gun it says the part in this package meets the rigid requirements of this company and is approved for use in its products caterpillar tractor company peoria illinois usa so to open it up well to see what's inside very carefully first piece yeah it's it's a grease gun there's your end there's the hose get the rest of it out and here it is and it is a Lincoln that's a Lincoln gun so yeah not even put together yet you'd thread this into there and yeah you'd have your grease gun so this even has a uh, lubricating equipment on there that's kind of neat and what's on this that is a lincoln end it is a lincoln hose it's i don't know if you guys can see it or not but it's all stamped in here this whole thing lincoln lubricating equipment that is way cool so to reference that with a manual that's where it gets a little bit involved here because they list three different grease guns and they show this generic picture right here that's not what we have but if we go back to what was the number on this again 8f9866 that is the final one that's listed see separate illustration for parts so you can see here's the breakdown of the first type which is not what we have there's a breakdown of the second type not what we have here's what we have right here the 8f9866 that's the whole lincoln gun that caterpillar assigned their own part numbers to neat how they did that So next we have this large wrench. It's a two and three quarter opening and we have a 9F3869 part number on it. So here we are, 9F3869 wrench. That is the track adjuster wrench right there. And 
Most times these were made by Armstrong. I'm looking for a maker's mark, but I'm not seeing it on this. Billings made a lot of the wrenches. Armstrong mostly made these larger ones. So anyway, that's the track adjuster wrench right there. So next we have a ball peen hammer. Nothing on the handle. We do have made in USA, 24 ounce, and this is a Billings. So we have the triangle right there with the B inside of it. That's Billings Tool Company right there. Billings made a lot of wrenches back in the day, a lot of different tools. Yeah, so that's what this one is. Reference it with the manual. That's our 1B7810 hammer. Not even a mark in it. Okay, we have a neat little item, and I've run across several of these through the years. You can see it says, let's get the glare off it, Caterpillar right there. That's a feeler gauge set. So we'll see what we have for blades. They should all be good. And standard arrangement. Let's see if we can get the glare off it. There we go. We have a five thousandths, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten thousandths blades. To find that in the manual, 1B9660 gauge valve clearance. That's what you use to make sure your valves were all running within spec. Fold it all back up, nice and compact. Okay, in the corner, we've got a whole bunch of wrenches. So, we'll lay all these out so we can get a good look at them. So, I've got these arranged so we can see what we've got. And yeah, these are. The Billings brand wrenches I was telling you about. You can see right there they have the triangle with the B in the middle. That's a Billings mark right there. And here's the 5B787. That's the cat part number. And then on the reverse side they have the sizes. We are one and five sixteenths there, one and a quarter there. And of course these go down in size as we go on. But here's the 787. We have a 786. We have a 785. And then it Skips the four and it goes to 783, 782, 781, and finally the little one, 5B780. So, and that is proper for this kit. We have them listed right over here. We start 5B787, 65, we skip four and it goes three, two, one, and then zero with all the sizes listed next to that. So, that's what would have been included in a D4 kit. Now, over here, this is the complete line of billing wrenches that was made for caterpillar and this is the largest one you can see we got the billings mark again and it's a 5b 789 this is the largest wrench that billings made for the caterpillar toolkits inch and five eighths on this end inch and a half here and even with this kit let's get it there we go get the numbers all pointed the right way man even with this kit this is the complete kit we're not missing any sizes they never made a 5B788. It started at 789 and it went to 787. So there's no such thing as a 5B788 for cat tools. I don't know why they skipped that number, but they did. So here we got the 87, which is we pick up with the inch and 5 sixteenths, one and a quarter like we had there. And we 80, have the 86, 85, 4, 3, 2, 1, and the 5B780. For some reason, and this is a 3 eighths and a 5 sixteenths, for some reason, the little 780 is always the hardest wrench to find. You can find these great big 789s everywhere. And it's like people like at the swap meets and stuff and on eBay and all these places, they like big wrenches, big vintage wrenches. You can pick these up for a few dollars all day long, even in good shape. If you can find this little 780, this thing is worth probably more than the rest of these wrenches combined, at least in my experience. I've always just had to pay just stupid money to get these tiny ones for some reason and even the 81s are pretty hard to find half inch and 7 16 so yeah that's the complete kit this is one i just pieced together from you know swap meets and just running across i'll hit wrench tables at these places and i'll dig through if i find a billings wrench i i see if it's got the 5b number on it or not if it doesn't have the 5b number i don't pick it up i'm not interested i'm just trying to put together the cat tools but you can really tell these are awesome. They have, it's like a powder coating finish on them yet. And the ends are still polished and it powder coatings inside the open ends yet. They've never been put on anything. So very nice set of wrenches right there. All right, got the kit placed back up here. One other thing I should have said, I forgot until now, Armstrong also made these 
5B series wrenches with the same numbering and same sizes. So if you find Armstrong wrenches that have these 5B numbers, those are authentic cat tools as well. Sorry, I forgot that last time. So, well, we have a screwdriver here. It just says Irwin 300, six inch, made in US of A. We don't have a cat part number on this anywhere, but referencing to the book, we have 1B7973 screwdriver right there in the middle. Take the next one out here. You can see it looks like about a three quarter end on it and it's uh, it's got a universal joint in it, L-shaped handle. We have 3B3850 and 3B3850 wrench flywheel clutch adjusting. That's what that one's all about. Next one, 916 end on it and we just have just this generic bent handle. I don't see any stampings on this. But that's the L2303 wrench, 9 16th hex. We have this, it's just three quarter bar stock, just with a 90 on the end. There's no stampings on it, once again, reference it to the manual though, that's the 9F2354 wrench. No idea who made that one. So we've got the pinch bar, pry bar, whatever you want to call it. And let's see what we have. That says Dasco 542A. So again, one that's never been used pristine on both ends. That's actually rather sharp. You gotta, you gotta be careful. Manual once again, 542A pinch bar. Okay, up here we have basically four different sizes of spark plug sockets and each one has a handle. I haven't been able to find, well I, should, I shouldn't say that, one of them has some stampings on right here. That's the, it's so faint it's hard to see but they're listed in here. We have 3B1285 wrench with a 7 8 and 15 16 hex and in a 3563A, that's what this one is, 3563A right there. That's the 15 16 and 1 and an 8 hex. So and a handle for each one. Now we have this rather odd looking little wrench with these kind of round edged socket openings on each end. Uh, this is for the bleeder screws right here and there's no stampings on this one, but it is the 8B6975 wrench fuel pump bent screw. We're getting down to it. This one right here, again, looks like about a 9 16th, no stampings, but that's looking like the 5F9322 wrench right there. This one now has always kind of baffled me. That's a 3H2727, definitely a cat number. That's inch and an eighth end on it. I'm guessing this is for like cylinder head nuts. Um, I'm not sure. It's actually not in the tool breakdown that's in the manual. So that one's kind of a mystery to me, but it's definitely a cat number and it's about the right size for a D4. Here's another interesting wrench. Now this one is definitely a D4 wrench. It's not in the 7U series book, but I found it in the 4G series uh, D4 or early RD4 book as well. So you go back here and it's listed right here, 1A665 wrench for track shoe nut. And it's actually kind of a neat wrench because, okay, here we have the 1A665 right there, made in USA. I can't tell the maker's mark. You can tell it's never been used for anything, but what they did, this actually went inside the track link where it's bridged between where the, the grouser bolts come up and then the nut is in between those bridges. So you would basically just sandwich this between the bridge of the link and get the nut within there. It's just kind of a, a pinch bar, kind of a binding bar is really all it is. And yeah, track shoe wrench right there. Kind of a neat one. Now here's where we go off the rails a little bit. This is not a cat tool, but this is a draw bar pin and we even have the cotter pin on the bottom. Each tractor came with two of them, one for each side of the draw bar. Again, cotter pin on the bottom, never been used. You can find them back here. That is the 5B9422 pin assembly. I'm not sure why they're in the toolkit. You can see them just barely right there down on the draw bar illustration. That's what those are for. So you would, you would pin that in your swing plate to keep your draw bar offset or fixed in the center, whatever, one for each side of that. And the last piece of the box, this is kind of a service tool, really. It's kind of like, you know, for the, the repair shop. It's not something that would normally be in a Caterpillar fender-mounted toolbox. So 
we should just kind of go through the writing first. It says, when fuel injection pumps, valves, or lines are removed for any reason, immediately protect the openings with the covers packed in this box. Do not open box until required. Caterpillar Tractor Company. So let's see if we can explode everything all over the place. Nope. And yeah, that's these are the caps you put on all your fuel injection pumps. Oop, and there goes one of the rubber stoppers as well. What can I say? We're live. I just picked it up. It's like a cork, shaped like a cork, but yeah, it's a rubber stopper. So we have rubber stoppers with the aluminum caps, and then we also have we have these, which would go in the fuel injection lines themselves. So you can keep your lines clean. You can keep them all plugged up. You can keep your injectors clean, return ports, pressure ports, full little service set right there of all the plugs you need to work on your fuel system and keep all the dirt out. So that's the breakdown of the NOS Caterpillar D4 toolkit. Definitely some interesting items in here that I've never seen anywhere else like this brush. It's like, how many people kept this brush? How many have you ever seen that had a cat part number on handle? I mean, I've never run across any. Or this oil can. That's just an Eagle oil can. There's tons of these things around. Once they got beat up and dinged a little bit and used for a few years, you'd never know that came with the D4. You know, the, the starting engine rope with the wooden handle. Those are all gone. This has no identifiers on at all. You'd, you know, you'd never know that was from a D4 kit. Lincoln grease guns are all over. Billings hammers are all over. Irwin screwdrivers are all over. You know, some of this stuff really can't definitively be tied back to Caterpillar, but it was all part of that kit. Like I said, Cat didn't make all the tools in those kits. You know, they just let other people supply them. So that's my contribution to the Vintage Cat Tools thread on the ACMOC bulletin board right now. Hopefully the link works. If not, it should be pretty easy to find. Hope you all enjoyed, well, just kind of unboxing the kit, having a good time, looking at all kind of neat stuff, and hope to see you back again.